Welcome to our table group discussion starter for the week of May 11, 2020. Our scripture today comes from Hebrews chapter 11. So here the chapter in its entirety. Hebrews chapter 11 from the message. The fundamental fact of existence is that this trust in God, this faith, is the firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living. It's our handle on what we can't see. The act of faith is what distinguished our ancestors, set them above the crowd. By faith, we see the world called into existence by God's word, what we see created by what we don't see. By an act of faith, Abel brought a better sacrifice to God than Cain. It was what he believed, not what he brought, that made the difference. That's what God noticed and approved as righteous. After all these centuries, that belief continues to catch our notice. By an act of faith, Enoch skipped death completely. They looked all over and couldn't find him because God had taken him. We know on the basis of reliable testimony that before he was taken, he pleased God. It's impossible to please God apart from faith. And why? Because anyone who wants to approach God must believe both that he exists and that he cares enough to respond to those who seek him. By faith, Noah built a ship in the middle of dry land. He was warned about something he couldn't see and acted on what he was told. The result? His family was saved. His act of faith drew a sharp line between the evil of the unbelieving world and the righteous of the believing. As a result, Noah became intimate with God. By an act of faith, Abraham said yes to God's call to travel to an unknown place that would become his home. When he left, he had no idea where he was going. By an act of faith, he lived in the country promised him, lived as a stranger camping in tents. Isaac and Jacob did the same, living under the same promise. Abraham did it by keeping his eye on an unseen city with real, eternal foundations, the city designed and built by God. By faith, barren Sarah was able to become pregnant, old woman as she was at the time, because she believed the one who made a promise would do what he said. That's how it happened, that from one man's dead and shriveled loins, there are now people numbering into the millions. Each one of these people of faith died, not yet having in hand what was promised, but still believing. How did they do it? They saw it way off in the distance and waved their greeting and accepted the fact that they were transients in this world. People who live this way make it plain that they are looking for their true home. If they were homesick for the old country, they would have gone back any time they wanted. But they were after a far better country than that, heaven country. You can see why God is so proud of them and has a city waiting for them. By faith, Abraham, at the time of testing, offered Isaac back to God. Acting in faith, he was as ready to return the promised son, his only son, as he had been to receive him. And this, after he had already been told, your descendants shall come from Isaac, Abraham. Abraham figured that if God wanted to, he could raise the dead. In a sense, that's what happened when he received Isaac back alive from off the altar. By an act of faith, Isaac reached into the future as he blessed Jacob and Esau. By an act of faith, Jacob on his deathbed, blessed each of Joseph's sons in turn, blessing them with God's blessing, not his own, as he bowed worshipfully upon his staff. By an act of faith, Joseph, while dying, prophesied the exodus of Israel and made arrangements for his own burial. By an act of faith, Moses' parents hid him away for three months after his birth. They saw the child's beauty and they braved the king's decree. By faith, Moses, when grown, refused the privileges of the Egyptian royal house. 
He chose a hard life with God's people rather than an opportunistic soft life of sin with the oppressors. He valued suffering in the Messiah's camp far greater than Egyptian wealth because he was looking ahead, anticipating the payoff. By an act of faith, he turned his heel on Egypt. Indifferent to the king's blind rage, he had his eye on the one no one can see and kept right on going. By an act of faith, he kept the Passover feast and sprinkled Passover blood on each house so that the destroyer of the firstborn wouldn't touch them. By an act of faith, Israel walked through the Red Sea on dry ground. The Egyptians tried it and drowned. By faith, the Israelites marched around the walls of Jericho for seven days, and the walls fell flat. By an act of faith, Rahab, the Jericho harlot, welcomed the spies and escaped the destruction that came on those who refused to trust God. I could go on and on, but I've run out of time. There are so many more. Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, the prophets. Through acts of faith, they toppled kingdoms, made justice work, took the promises for themselves. They were protected from lions, fires, and swords, turned disadvantage to advantage, won battles, routed alien armies. Women received their loved ones back from the dead. There were those who, under torture, refused to give in and go free, preferring something better, resurrection. Others braved abuse and whips and, yes, chains and dungeons. We have stories of those who were stoned, sawed in two, murdered in cold blood, stories of vagrants wandering the earth in animal skins, homeless, friendless, powerless. The world didn't deserve them, making their way as best they could on the cruel edges of the world. Not one of these people, even though their lives of faith were exemplary, got their hands on what was promised. God had a better plan for us, that their faith and our faith would come together to make one completed whole, their lives of faith not complete apart from ours. In John 14, chapter 1, Jesus is quoted as saying, Do not be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. Here in the Hebrew scripture, the writer explains the importance of trusting in God. To do so, he or she points to the faith of God's people from Cain and Abel to the prophets and on to the first century Christians. Life is difficult. We know that. Its difficulties were no exception for these men and women. And perhaps the point, or at least one of the points here, is to remind the reader of these stories as a means of encouragement in those difficult times of life. In fact, the very next verse of the very next chapter says this, So then, with endurance, let us also run the race that is laid out in front of us, since we have such a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us. That cloud of witness didn't stop in the first century. They continue on today. So this week, during our table group conversations, I want us to talk about those people who have been examples of faith for us. Likely, you haven't seen them in a literal lion's den, and undoubtedly, they have not been perfect people. But in the midst of their life struggles and celebrations, and in the midst of their failings and their shortcomings, who has been part of of your cloud of witnesses. Name them. Tell their story. How has their story encouraged you? How can you take your own struggles and demonstrate acts of faith for whomever is watching you? May God bless your conversations as you move through this scripture this week. <music>